Friday, April 24th, I think is the date. Uh, it's quiz day. It's your last day to get a five. I don't care what you got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I don't care if it was a five. Today's the only day that matters. So uh, if you've been doing really well this week, whatever you've been doing, do the same thing today. If you haven't been doing so hot, hopefully you're watching this video. Um, because guys, if you watch these videos, you're going to figure out how to solve the problem. So keep that in mind. Um, but if you are watching, thank you. That shows me you want to get better. And that I can't appreciate. So we're going to get right into it. Um, and normally, the last video of the week is the shortest, just because guys, you've seen this video so many times, or you've seen me solve them so many times, you kind of have a better idea now. So uh, let's get these pulled up. Oh, first of all, Victor Oladipo, Indiana Pacers Sports, please come back. Uh, let's get this pulled up here. Share the screen. All right, number one. It says, my kitchen floor is 18 feet long and 9 feet wide. Oops. I'm going to put new tiles for each square foot of the floor. If... The tiles come in packs of nine. How many packs will I need to buy? So, again, we're going to pull that whiteboard up. If it doesn't give you a picture, you really want to make sure that you are putting a picture on your paper somewhere. Here is my kitchen floor. And I'll go ahead and label everything that it told me. It gave me the dimensions, 18 feet by 9 feet. It gave us keywords in there that made us think we need to find the area which we know we're going to do by uh, multiplying your length times your width. And similar to other questions, you're not expected to know 18 times 9 off the top of your head. So we'll stack them. We'll do a little bit of work here. And we will multiply, starting in the ones place. 9 times 8, 72. 2 stays, 7 goes. And then 9 times 1 gives you 9, plus 7 gives you 16. So that gives you an area of 162 square feet, meaning I need 162 tiles. But those tiles come in packs of nine. So I don't want to go to the store and buy 162 packs of tiles because then I'll be left over with way too many. But I need to go buy those bags. So here's where I was emailing um, with a student the other a couple days ago and they were showing me how they were solving it and they were drawing pictures and pictures are great guys but when you're trying to draw packs of nine all the way till you get to 162 that's a big picture and there's an easier way to do it if you know you're trying to split those tiles into equal groups of nine just do the division so you've got 162 divided by nine uh nine does not go into one dangerous monkey swipe bananas you know the drill but it does go into 16 one time, and 9 times 1 gives me 9. Then I can subtract, do some regrouping here, but 16 minus 9 would give me 7. And then I would bring down my 2, and I would start over. Back to the top, back to the division. 9 does go into 72 evenly. It goes in 8 times. And if I did 9 times 8, that would give me 72. 72 minus 72 is obviously going to give me zero with nothing left to bring down. That would give me an answer of 18 packs. Now, this one is not as challenging as the ones we've done previously because you didn't have a remainder that you had to interpret. This one just straight up gives you the answer, which would have been D, um, 18 packs. Hopefully, nobody's choosing A. If you're choosing A, you're doing the right math. Um, but you're not. You're either not checking or you're just not going a further step, so you're not finishing the problem but that one would be d that one in my class at least has actually been one of the highest so that's a that's a good sign all right moving on to number two it says the perimeter of the brand new mural at the history museum is 46 feet it's 20 feet long how wide is it all right again anytime we're dealing with area and perimeter and it doesn't give us a picture we're gonna fix that we're gonna draw it ourselves Perimeter was what? 46. Length is 20. We want to know the width. So if you have missed this one and missed this one and missed this one, do what I have said every single time. Plug in the answer choices. Put the opposite sides on there, 20 and 20. 
and take whatever the answer choices are and plug them in on the sides and add. I'm telling you, this should be 100% of the fourth graders should be getting this question right. Um, but I'm going to show you the way that I like to think about it, because if I know the total is 46, let me go ahead and figure out what I already have. I'll take it away. We'll figure out what's left. So if I add up what I already have, you could probably mentally do this math. 20 plus 20 gives you 40. And to see what's left, I'm going to take my perimeter of 46, get rid of the 40 feet that I've already covered, and that's going to leave me with six feet. And here's where I got no problem with, or I'm not concerned with people getting that far. I think most people are probably getting that far. But the problem I have is people are just taking six and saying that's the answer. But that means you didn't do 20 plus 20 plus six plus six, because that wouldn't give you 46. I know I sound like a broken record, but we got to get this question right. This is an effort question. Guys, you got to take that six and you've got to split it between those two sides because those are two equal sides. You guys know your multiplication well enough to know that that would be three. But again, you can avoid all that work. Take your answer choices, plug them in, do the addition. To me, that takes a little bit longer because um, you got to try everything. If you do it this way, you get your answer in one shot. Uh, I don't care which way you do it because they're gonna, both going to give you the right answer as long as you do the right math. So. That one, those are the ones, honestly, number two is the one that I've been clicking on. I've been looking at who's missed it. If you miss it Monday, no big deal. But if you're missing it Tuesday, Wednesday, if you're missing it Thursday, that's when, um, that's when we kind of run into some issues. So hopefully you're trying those different strategies to help you out a little bit. All right. Uh, three and four, again, we should be crushing these questions. Number three is just right here. You got to have it memorized. It says, which of the following choices does not represent a rectangle? So kind of what I like to do is I would ignore my answer choices, like cover them up with my hand, and I would just think of anything I could say about a rectangle. I'd visualize it and list its attributes. All right, and if you list all its attributes, you can then look at your answer choices and see, hmm, that doesn't represent a rectangle, and you could get rid of it, or it would be your answer in this case. So since we've got answer choices, we'll look at them. Uh, it says it has four equal sides. You guys know a rectangle. You know its attributes. You know it does not have four equal sides. A rhombus does. A square does. A rectangle does not. So you found your answer already. We'll still check the other ones. Um, it does have four right angles. It does have two sets of parallel sides because it's a parallelogram. And it is a quadrilateral because it has four sides. So I know I've said number three the past few days has been easy. Guys, this one. I mean, it, it doesn't get much easier than that. All right, number four says, how many total ribbons were measured? Speaking of easy, y'all, I feel like the only way to miss this one is to make a silly mistake because, and this is, I've said this in the past, this is kind of why I like don't use the word easy very often or I don't like the word because a lot of people think easy, you know, let me blow through this one real quick. Let me fly through this. If you miss this one, it's just because you made a small counting mistake. So if I want to know what all those, how many ribbons were measured in all, I got to start at five, I got to work to seven, I got to count them all. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. 27 is an answer choice. The other answer choices are close. Guys, it would take you 30 seconds to double check that. So I'll do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. If I checked it twice, feel pretty good about it. That one would give me a C27. All right, last but not least, it's been the best question all week. It's been tearing my kids up. I know that. Hopefully today will be our day. Uh, it says, I bought 46 boxes of dog treats for my chubby dog, Albert. Each box holds 25 treats inside. If Albert eats 19 boxes of treats, how many treats does he have left? So this one's a little bit different. If you've tried to kind of solve this the same way, you would have realized kind of halfway through, like I did something that I didn't have to. So look, 46 boxes. This is one of those read a little, do a little. That's supposed to say boxes. That looks awful. 25 inside. Uh, 
Now the next number that it gives us represents boxes. It says if Albert eats 19 boxes. So really the 25 treats inside, that doesn't even come into play yet. I just know that I've got 46 boxes and I'm about to eat 19 of them. So I kind of skip over the 25 right now and I can just go ahead and eat or subtract those 19 boxes. All right, starting in the ones place, obviously I've got more on the floor. Got to go next door and get 10 more. So we'll do our regrouping here. 16 minus nine is gonna give me seven and three minus one is gonna give me two. That means that Albert now has 27 boxes. But the question does not ask how many boxes does he have left? It says how many treats does he have left? Well, if I've got 27 boxes, and there's 25 treats in each box, then I would multiply. So yeah, it's kind of the same thing, but it's almost like we're skipping or for flip-flopping steps on this one. So we go to multiply starting in the ones place. Five times seven is 35. Five stays, three goes. All right, going across, five times two is 10, plus three is 13. All right, once I've multiplied by the ones, I'll scratch this out. I'm gonna come down a notch and I'm gonna add my placeholder. I'm gonna put that zero because if I'm multiplying in the tens, my first number is gonna go down here in the tens place. So now I'm starting with the two down at the bottom in the tens place. Two times seven is 14. Four stays, one goes. Two times two is four, plus one is five. Now I think in our first fan five from virtual learning, we did two digit by two digit. And you can do that box method, the area model, that works too. Last step would be I gotta add these together. Five plus zero gives me five. Four plus three gives me seven. Five plus one gives me six. That would give me a total of 675 treats, which would be the answer choice C. So if you've been getting a four, I'm hoping that number five is the one that you've been missing because really, after going through that video, one through four, you know, we ought to be crushing those. I don't want you to miss five, but if you're going to miss one, I can kind of understand why it would be that one. So you're getting ready to get cracking on your quiz. Um, guys, it's the last day of the school week, so work super, super hard. Do your absolute best. And look, if you're not comfortable with one of these questions, don't do fan five yet. Go back and watch previous videos. Email your teacher if you have a question on something you want to see an extra question. Don't do it if you're not ready. Um, but good luck. Work hard. Have an awesome weekend. And we will see you next Tuesday. Bye, guys.